So graphing a trig function, we're going to graph y is equal to 2 sine of x plus 3. It's really important that we know that this is not equal to 2 sine x plus 3. Well, these are not the same thing at all, uh, Will. This, this creates something called a phase shift, kind of a left-right movement. So if it meant x plus 3, as this part is called the argument, then, it, then the whole thing would be in parentheses. If it's not, Will, then what we have to anticipate is that this is in parentheses, okay? So these are not the same thing. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. Do the same thing we always do here. I'm going to draw out the Cartesian plane, but I'm not going to label anything at first. So here's a Cartesian plane. Here, Allie, this, in this case, this is not the origin, but it looks like it right now. I have this line here for a specific reason, which I'd like to show you. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph a sine function, and then we'll go back and give it some details. So here's a sine function, I guess, if you don't mind, pretending that all of this is perfectly beautiful and symmetrical. Remember that the function does keep going here and so forth, right? And it goes down here. Whoops, not that far down. Hannah, sorry. Right? More like that, right? But the, what, I, what I'm really interested in is this part right here because I'm going to be able to get some details here, okay? So we have an amplitude of 2. That's important. But what is this line right here? This is, I'm telling you, I drew this line on purpose, but I'm saying, I said to you at the very beginning, this is not the x-axis. What line is this? Y is equal to what? The whole thing was lifted by how much? Kendall? By three, right? This is our k value. It's a vertical shift. So it was lifted by three. So if that's true, then this line right here, Ms. Zabsky, is y is equal to 3. Well, but we have an amplitude of 2. So what must this height be right here? Haley? It's 5, right? Because our amplitude is 5, and granted, amplitude is the height from this horizontal line of symmetry. All right? So if that's true, then what's this height down here? What's this minimum height right here? Danny? Is it 2? Is it 0? Hannah? Is it negative 5? How far up did I go from 3? I went 3, I went up how much? Good job. Okay, that's what you're supposed to Right, good job, good job, good job. So 1. Right, because I went, I went from 3, that's this part right here, Danny, right? I went from 3, and I went up 2, right? And then I was at 3, I had to go down the same amount, so 3 minus 2 is, everybody good with that? So that's all you have to do to deal with this little bit of the shift problem here. Now we need to get our 5 points, don't we? So our 5 points are these. This first point is the point 0 what? Really? Zero, zero? Come on. Remember, I explained more than once. This is not the x-axis here. Right? This is not the x-axis. This is my line of symmetry. And I even, look, well, I even marked it. Right? So, you know, let me break this line up some more so it doesn't look like I'm claiming this is something that is not. I'm just, the reason I have this line, well, is just so I can use it comparatively because I know that I want, I want two over this line and two under the line, and I have to figure out what that line is. Is that all right? Haley, good? Okay, so this is the point zero, three. What's this point out here? It is two pi because we know the period, right? The period of the curve is two pi over, over what? Over absolute omega, right? Where this, where omega is the number in front of x, is omega, right? And we can't see a number in front of x, so we assume it's a 1. So we take out omega and we put in 1, and 2 pi over 1 is 2 pi. So this is the point 2 pi Sawyer. Good job, boy. 
And what's this point right here, Sawyer? Here? Uh? Good. Pi 3. And what's this point right here in the middle of those two? How much? It is exactly pi s, right? Because we take pi plus 0, right? We're using midpoint theorem, which is m, not slope, but midpoint is x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2 gives us the midpoint, which is here, right? So we had pi plus 0 divided by 2 is pi halves, pi halves, and it happens to be at a maximum. So what is that, Kendall? Pi halves 5. Good job. Is that all right? So that gives us 1, 2, 3, 4. We're missing this point right here in the middle. And what is that? Right, it's 2 pi plus pi. We're using this formula right here. So it's 2 pi plus pi divided by 2, which is 3 pi halves. 3 pi halves. And the point 3 pi halves what? Pi halves what? 1. I'm hoping sincerely that we can do this for the quiz, can't we? We'll do one more video on cosine and see how that looks. Deal? And maybe we'll invert it. I'm sorry, not invert it. Maybe we'll reflect it over the x-axis, okay? All right.